Auto digitizing can be a great way to jumpstart a design, and Hatch gives us a variety of options for creating a design with minimal effort. I'm Lindy Goodall, and in this video, we'll auto digitize a design. I'll go to a new blank design, and the first thing we need to do is to insert some artwork. So open the auto digitize toolbox, click on insert artwork. Auto digitizing works best with clean, crisp artwork. I'll choose one from the included set. Let's pick this fancy seashell and click open. The fastest way to create a design is auto digitize instant embroidery. So make sure your artwork is selected. If it's not, click on it and I'll just click on auto digitize instant embroidery. And voila, we have an instant embroidery design. Auto digitizing detects the colors in the design and adds them to the design colors toolbar, which you can see down here. If your image is a ping with a transparent background or it has a white background, Hatch will ignore it and not add any stitches there. So we don't have any background that we have to delete. Let's undo that. I'll do Control Z, select my artwork again by clicking on it, and I'll go to Auto Digitize Embroidery. This method is still pretty instant, but it gives us a little more control before the stitches are applied. This artwork is clean with solid areas of color, so I'll just accept the settings here and move on to the next screen. And here's where I can do some changes. I don't want my background, so I'll click on Omit. I don't need this color, so I'll click on Omit there. The drop-down shows us what kind of stitches will be applied. Fills will use a tatami or satin fill, while details will use a satin line. So I know that this is my outline. I'm going to move that to the bottom. So let's click on that one and move down. And I'm going to tell it its details. You usually want your outline to run at the end. Now another thing we can do here is we can either add the colors as bitmap colors to the palette and choose our threads later, or if you know you're using a certain thread brand, you can click this button and select the thread charts. Now here Madeira Classic is selected. If I use a different brand, I'll double click on that one to remove it. And let's say I'm going to use Hemingworth, I'll double click on that and it adds it to the list and I can just say OK. Now when the colors are listed, you'll see that these are Hemingworth colors and they will get added to my design colors toolbar as Hemingworth threads. I like what Hatch has chosen for the other settings, so I'll leave those alone. And there's our design. Even if you're an advanced digitizer and don't use auto digitizing, you can use this to get the thread colors added to your palette. So I find that a handy thing to do. So down here you can see my thread colors. Now let's take a look at the status bar, which is this blue line along the bottom. You'll often see prompts down here, but we can see details about our design. We can see our design height and width. We can see the stitch count, and we can see the fabric. Auto digitizing works by rules, and there are guidelines for good digitizing. Hatch takes some of the guesswork out of various stitch settings, such as density, underlay, and compensation, based on the fabric choice. Let's hide our artwork. I'm going to press D on the keyboard. D is a toggle and it will variously show and hide our artwork. I'm going to press T to exit out of TrueView, or you could just press the TrueView button up here. And let's zoom in a bit. We have pure cotton selected, and Hatch has looked at that and decided that we need a certain kind of compensation and a certain kind of underlay. Can you see this zigzag here that's running under the satin stitch? That's underlay. Now suppose we're going to make beach towels. We have seashells, so let's make beach towels. I can go to the Customize Design Toolbox, and I'll pick Auto Fabric. I'm going to change my fabric type to Terry Toweling. Now before I click OK, I want you to remember what the underlay is here, and notice what the stitch count is here, because they're going to change. I'll click OK. Now we have made changes to the design attributes and our stitch count has gone up and it says Terry Toweling right here. Another thing that can be difficult for a new embroiderer is figuring out what order to build the design for efficient sewing. And auto digitizing does a really good job here. Let's go to the stitch player. I'll back out first. 
we'll uh, zoom back out. I'll press zero on the keyboard and I'll go to the stitch player. And let's stitch it really fast. And you can see how the design is stitching. Keep in mind that the more complicated a design is, the more ways there are to sequence it. And usually there are certain trade-offs that you need to balance. If you see a better order, you can change it. Let's turn TrueView back on. So while auto-digitizing has taken care of many of the technical aspects, the final appearance is more about making decisions about how to interpret the artwork by applying various stitch types and attributes. And this is where the fun comes in. Let's change this area to a different stitch type. So I'll just double click it. The object properties docker opens up and I can change it from a satin to a tatami. I can change it to a different type of fill pattern. And you can get kind of crazy with this. <laughs> I urge you not to put too many different stitch types in there because it'll just look tacky. But what I want you to see is, yes, we can make a design instantly, but you may want to take some time and do some adjustments to it. When we opened up this video, I showed you this design. This was auto-digitized using the same way that I just showed you. And I've done some modifications, changed some stitch types, changed some stitching order, and now it runs more efficiently. So you can spend a lot of time optimizing a auto-digitized design the way you want, or depending on the artwork, you may be able to just instantly digitize it and it's good to go, especially children's artwork. Depending on the level you have, you may have more choices than I have here in the composer level.